Hey everybody, we're back and got a new video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the March 13th uh, tornado event in the Texas Panhandle. A storm did a really interesting uh, thing, produced three tornadoes in rapid succession. That means we're going to be looking at this storm right here. If you see the velocity image, you can already tell there's some interesting things going on. And we're going to break that down and kind of share some lessons I think that are important if you're watching storms uh, this spring. So let's get started. Now our first view here is a little bit more zoomed in. Just take a look in real time or just a little bit faster, not real time, but a little bit faster in terms of the loop just to kind of get a feel for the lay of the land before we slow this way down and break down what exactly happened. Let's go. Now, as we get started here, there's a tornado right here. This is, uh, you know, anytime you see the bright reds bright, blues in this case together that indicates strong low level rotation exactly what happened this tornado now crossing i-27 and what you see you see a lot of you see this tornado continuing as it crosses i-27 now watch just to its northeast watch what happens in the velocity loop you see another circulation rapidly intensifies right about now you start seeing it really come into play and this is actually a second tornado developing just to the northeast of the ongoing one now there's another tornado and this storm is moving northeast so the overall storm motion is moving northeast and you can just see it you can see how now we have the new tornado has taken a dominant position and it's still you know moving northeast but what look what happens really quick the, you can see there's actually another tornado developing now you can see it bam this is this is we'll break this down a little bit more but there's actually a very complicated handoff that just happened and now you have yet another tornado moving northeast and it's about to turn a little bit more north and yeah just very interesting that was three tornadoes in rapid succession at least pretty rapid succession this is a cyclic supercell and anytime you see a storm doing this sort of thing especially if you're observing a storm in person you need to uh, be very careful. This is when uh, getting close can really be a risky endeavor because as a storm does this stuff really quickly, if you have roads and you're in there close, you can find yourself caught in between a rapidly developing situation with two tornadoes at the same time, uh, that sort of thing. So the first radar image I want to look at just in detail is this one because there's so much going on here. You can see the ongoing tornado right here. You can even see there's like a little donut shape in the supercell in that hook right there. That's actually the tornado. It's uh, wrapped in rain because there is rain around the tornado, but it's there. But what you also see just to its northeast, what do you see? You see a secondary developing tornado there on the velocity image and on the reflectivity. What do you see? You see a little baby appendage coming out and that is all a newly developing i guess for lack of a better term hook echo that's the rfd surging around and it's going to pick up on this other circulation in just a bit so how do you identify a tornadic circulation versus like reds and greens like the rorschach test or something oh my god did i i butchered that didn't i that was bad that was really bad but Let's just say that if you're just, are you looking at a tornado or are you looking at something else? Well, a couple of things I do is I, first off, I keep in mind first context. Context is important. If there's, you know, reds and greens, so to speak, really bright next to each other, and it's with a supercell at the hook end, that's a pretty good sign there's something going on like this. Now, if it's up here, you know, you can see by the radar, there's also reds and greens together. Does that mean there's a tornado imminent there just northeast of Amarillo? No, that's not what that means at all. That's actually where the radar is picking up the different wind directions at that point with winds blowing to the radar and away from the radar. So you got to keep these things in context. Also, like how likely is it that there's going to be a tornado on with a single cell storm? There's probably going to be some reds and greens beside each other in almost every storm. That's very common. It's not something you don't expect. It's an expected thing. But you're looking for contextual clues as to like, is this a tornadic circulation or is this, you know, just something that's uh, some kind of aberration the radar is picking up or even just some kind of light rotation. Now, listen, I think you could bring somebody into the cult of weather nerds and we could show you this radar image and you could probably find a tornado on this image. Like, it's not that hard. It's right here. There's a donut shape. You can actually see that tornado. It's definitely uh, an HP look with that very thick thick 
hook coming around. I mean, that looks like it's a very wet storm. And I mean, admittedly, you would have a hard time seeing this tornado from any vantage point. I mean, where are you going to see a tornado? Maybe, maybe, maybe from that northeast side where the precip's a little lighter. You might get some contrast, but this is a storm. It's going to be hard to see that tornado that's ongoing right there. But what you also want to check out is the secondary area just to the north that is also rapidly turning tornadic. Now, what I want to talk about with this slide is like storm chasing. If you're chasing and you're trying to effort a view and you're just northeast of this thing, say you're right here. Well, here's the problem with being right there. First off, you're in the path. That's a problem. But the second thing is there's a tornado forming just pretty much right above you at this point. And on these rapidly cycling, quick moving storms on big risk days, that's something you got to keep in mind, like getting close as possible. Uh, but you always got to be smart about that. So we've moved ahead now and you can see what's happened here. Well, first off, there's two different signatures to compare here. And this will be very instructive for what we're wanting to talk about. What's a tornadic circulation versus what isn't on radar? Well. I think you can clearly tell on the velocity image to the right where the tornado is. And if you look here on the reflectivity, it's a lot harder. This is why velocity is very important for finding tornadoes because you on the left-hand side on that reflectivity image, like where's the tornado? Could you point it out? That's a lot of colors and there's not no real way my goodness, that was a double negative, but there's no real way to actually see what's going on there in terms of a tornado. So that's why velocity is important. And then also, if you look to the southern storm here, you can see there's there's the hook appendage uh, coming out from it, but where th there's no tight circulation. It doesn't look like the storm to the north in any way, shape, or form. So, you know, it, it's it's clearly not as close to producing a tornado as the one to the north is, which is actually producing a tornado at this point. So from a spotting chasing perspective, I mean, there you're... I, I mean, you could be, you could see this tornado on the North Storm, but you have to be up in that rain. It's very dangerous. Highly not recommended. I mean, I'm not going to recommend you do that. People's mileage may vary, all that stuff. If you feel the need to go into rain looking for a tornado, I mean, that that's on you. That's between you and the Lord, so to speak. Like, you, you have fun with that. Uh, the Southern Storm has much better views, but it's not as strong. I mean, it's just quite, quite, quite clearly not as strong as the one to the north. And from the National Weather Service in Amarillo's office, here's the summary of the first tornado. It was an EF2, had a max width of 1,500 yards, big tornado. And it was quickly followed by this tornado, which was the Paladuro Canyon tornado. It was an EF1, it had a width of 800 yards. Again, a very big tornado. LCLs were low, so it's easy to get bigger tornadoes on days like that. And then you have also the Paladuro to Washburn tornado, the third one, which was an EF0, had a path length of 13 miles though, didn't hit anything, but it was big and it was long lasting. So hey, I hope you enjoyed this, trying something new, just seeing how this fits, how this feels when we break down radar images. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Be sure to subscribe to us if you haven't already. We do a lot of educational content. This is just like the tip of the iceberg. There's so much on this channel you can check out. And we'll see you as we head into spring. It's springtime and it's chase time. So we'll see you next time.